Welcome students to this section. Now in this section I will be talking to you about DNA repair. Why is why do we need to repair our DNA? Is there any necessity? Yes, many times it so happens that it will be necessary that the DNA undergoes certain modifications. At that time our body needs to have certain mechanism to repair our DNA. Another thing is when the cells are dividing during replication, there may occur certain errors during this replication. Even if there is a such a nice proofreading, fidelity, everything is maintained, still there might be chances of error. And during this time also, we need to have a mechanism to repair this DNA. So let us look at what are the reasons why we need to repair this DNA. So despite elaborate proofreading during replication, errors do occur. So human, why human has nearly 10 to the power of 14 nucleated cells with 3 into 10 to the power of 9 base pairs. The numbers are mind boggling. So during this time, don't you think there might be errors? Yes. So the replication machine itself makes appro approximately one error per 10 to the power of 6 nucleotide that is copied. And DNA mismatch repair corrects 99% of these errors, increasing the overall accuracy to one mistake in 10 to the power of 9 nucleotides that is copied. Okay, most of this one mistake, fortunately for us, the fact that we are alive today, healthy today and all it is possible because most of the errors that are there are in the non-coding region and not in the coding region. Otherwise, you cannot imagine what could be the consequences because of just because the cell is dividing. So, but we do need the DNA mismatch repair system or any repair system is needed within the body. So, why? If the wrongly incorporated nucleotide is not detected, is not replaced, the sequence will change and this may become a permanent change in the sequence. It may go to the daughter cell. So what? This is nothing but mutation and mutations are known to cause, cause cancer. Mutations are known to cause so many deleterious left effects. Mutations can be can be lethal also. So the DNA what is required, what DNA repair mechanism refers to a collection of processes by which a cell identifies and corrects damage to the DNA molecules that encode its genome. Basically the different mechanism by which it sees to that the DNA genome is same as that of the parent cell or will continue to remain the same throughout despite certain things which are trying to damage it. So let us look at the different repair mechanisms and what are the causes for DNA damage. So let us look at the different types of DNA damage and the and their causes. So what are the uh, different types? Single base alteration. So in this whole sequence, one base has altered. It could be a depurination. That means purine has been removed. Deamination of cytosine to uracil. This is the most commonest where C is converted to U just by removing an amino group. Deamination of C to U. Deamination of adeno, adenine to hypoxanthin. Alkylation of the bases. Insertion deletion or a base analog incorporation. Now that is single base. Other types of DNA damage include two base alteration. UV light induced pyrimidine dimers. TT thymine dimer is the commonest among this. Chain breaks. Ionizing radiations can cause chain breaks. That is the DNA double stranded chain is broken or a single stranded chain is broken. Reactive oxygen species are also breaking the DNA. There may be cross linkage also between one strand to another strand or within the same strand between a DNA and a protein. So between bases in the same or opposite strands or between DNA and protein. All this can lead to DNA damage. DNA has damage. So what are the ways in which our body can repair this DNA? Our main repair mechanism, first it has to be able to recognize that there is a distorted region of the DNA. Okay, first it recognizes. Then what does it do? It is going to excise it, excision of the damaged region. Then fill the gap with DNA polymerase, seal the lick with lycase. These are the things which is happening in all the different DNA repair mechanisms. Whichever it is, DNA repair mechanism, the same thing. Recognize, cut. Add seal. 
these are the things that are going to happen in all this but again i'll be talking to you specifically with respect to each of their different mechanisms so let us look at the, uh, which are the mechanisms basically we have four mechanisms existing in the body to repair dna they are called as mismatch repair base excision repair nucleotide excision repair and double strand break repair why do we need these mechanism it all depends upon what type of damage has happened to dna if it is just a mismatch if it is a small damage let us have a different mechanism if it's a bigger damage let us have a different mechanism so depending on the damage we have different repair mechanisms so let us look at the first one mismatch repair mismatch repair is basically for replication errors errors that have occurred during replication it has resulted in the formation of a mismatch suppose a was supposed to base pair with t but instead of t there is something else then you call it a mismatch so it this mismatch repair is to remove errors that escape the proofreading we have a elaborate proofreading available during replication so but also still there is a mismatch maybe a instead of forming uh, bond with t it has formed bond with c or something like that then it is a mismatch so again we need a repair mechanism so first thing is especially during uh, this is happening during replication now what happens is the this mismatch repair mechanism should be able to differentiate that which is the original strand and which is the newly synthesized strand it should be able to differentiate between the two if it cannot differentiate then what if it what was the right base what if it changes it so if the original was having the right base a and instead of it forming a base with uh, t it has formed a base with c now this has to be removed so first this mechanism should be able to differentiate whether this is the right one or this is the right one so to do this there is what is called as now a newly synthesized replicating strand newly strand during replication is non methylated whereas the original strand is methylated that is how it recognizes it is methylated the original strand is methylated whereas the nascent strand is non methylated so how does it recognize the new strand is not methylated where is this methylation occurring in the original strand it is usually of the adenine residues and it takes place on the gatc sequences gatc sequences are found once every 1000 nucleotides so the dna is so long every 1000 nucleotides there is a sequence gatc in this a is going to get methylated now in e coli this mismatch repair is mediated by a group of proteins called as mut mut proteins which recognize a new strand similar analogous proteins are also present in human beings what happens in this now the mut proteins identify the mispaired nucleotides it first identifies this then what it does an endonuclease nicks the strand the nucleotide is removed along with some extra segment so what happens is this is going to be recognized by a protein this will be recognized minute it is recognized an endonuclease is going to nick the strand so it is going to break the strand so when this strand is broken this has to be removed so along with this mismatch nucleotide few other nucleotides are also removed now what has happened there is a gap in the new strand now this gap along with some extra portion the whole thing is removed now this gap is going to be filled by dna polymerase and the nick is going to be sealed by dna ligase and the new strand will contain the right nucleotide simple things that happen here mismatch why do we call it mismatch this is during during replication mcq point of view remember that mismatch repair occurs for errors that have taken place during replication the site is removed and along with some segment dna polymerase dna ligase and the new segment is formed and one important thing is recognition of the old strand by its methylation so i have given you here gap is filled by dna polymerase and the dna ligase ligates the ends 
Now, what is the significance of this type of mismatch repair? So, there is a condition called as hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer, HNPCC. It is also called as the Lynch syndrome. Now, they have been found out that there are mutations in the genes involved in mismatch repair. So, we needed one endonuclease to recognize it and also we needed some thing which can recognize the methyl group, the mute proteins and etc. Now, what if there is a mutation in the mute proteins or the analogous proteins in human beings? It will result that these proteins cannot recognize that there is a mismatch and they cannot cleave and this will result in disease. So, mutations in genes involved in mismatch repair happen in HNPCC. Now, let us go to the next type of repair that is known as base excision repair. How is it different from other repairs? I will just tell to you. Now, the base of a DNA can be altered. Not why, only one base is altered. It can spontaneously deamination of C2U is the, uh, is the most common way by which base of the DNA is altered. But other causes are there like alkylatic compounds like nitrous or acids. Now what will this whole thing BER involve? It involves removal of the abnormal base like uh, U by uracil N glycosylase. Then leaves a apurinic or apyrimidinic site and uh, apyrimidinic or apyrimidinic uh, site endonucleases recognize start the excision and gap filling. They make a cut 5' prime to the AP site and deoxyribosphosphate lyase removes the sugar residue. So much, did you understand what is happening? So let me just put it to you. Now there is a DNA double strand. What has happened? It was originally containing GC. It was properly matched. Now what happens due to deamination? Slowly the C has gone and because of alkylating reagents or something, the C has formed a U. Now what will happen? The first thing that will happen is this U is going to be removed or whichever it is, whichever this is there, only the base is going to be removed, only the base. Remember here no nick has taken place, only the base is removed. That is why the name is base excision repair because the base has been removed. When the base has, rem has been removed, what happens? It leads to a apurinic or a apyrimidinic site. Now this site, which is an empty site, can be recognized by what? A AP endonuclease that is a purinic endonuclease that will recognize it. What it will do this AP endonuclease it is an endonuclease so it can cleave in between. So what it does is it is recognizes okay there is no no purine or pyramid it will recognize this and it makes a 5 prime cut to the AP side cuts on both the sides mainly on the AP side uh, on the 5 prime side and it deoxy so it makes a cut here so it makes a cut here on the 5 prime side just for that I'll show it to you once it makes a cut there is a sugar phosphate residue still remaining this sugar phosphate residue has to be removed and this is done by a deoxyribose phosphate lyase so in the next step deoxyphosphate lyase will remove this also from the 5 prime cut and now dna polymerase and dna lyase are going to fill the gap with the right right base initially only one cut remove the sugar phosphate at the base by DNA polymerase and DNA lycase. So this is known as base excision repair. What is the clinical significance? Base excision repair deficiencies have been implicated in cancer, neurodegenerative diseases and also in aging. I will go to the next excision repair that is nucleotide excision repair. Now DNA lesions that cause large distortion up to 30 pairs then you call it as nucleotide excision repair. So, this is a large error there. Okay, it is not just DNA with a single error. There is a huge error that is happening. A lot of places, 30 days place, there is a lot of error. Okay, and when does such a big chunk of error happen? When there, it could be large distortion, that could be one reason. Now, smoking, especially benzopyrene and guanine adducts can uh, result in the formation of a uh, of a large distortion. 
UV lights also causes pyrimidine dimer formation. So in this it is not nothing much but T and T will form a pyrimidine dimer. And ionizing radiations, chemicals can cause large distortion. It could be a small one also sometimes if it is a pyrimidine dimer or it could be a small thing like smoking which is called a benzopyrene gone in adducts. Now the thymine dimers, what will happen whenever there is a pyrimidine dimer like this, like TT dimer, it prevents the DNA polymerase from replicating. So the first thing that happens is recognition and excision of the dimers by UV specific endonuclease. This cleaves DNA on both the sides of the damage, both 5' prime and 3'. Prime. Uh, oligonucleotide is removed, DNA polymerase and ligase. So what was this difference with base excision or with uh, with base excision in base excision there was only one cut whereas in this there are going to be two cuts so one here one here and this whole nucleotide is going to be removed so if this is a whole thing whole segment a big segment is removed let me just show to you so if it is like this from here to here the whole thing along with the pyrimidine or whatever oligonucleotide whole thing is removed then DNA polymerase and DNA ligase is, are going to resynthesize and join the strands. So oligonucleotide is removed. Now what is the clinical significance? Xeroderma pigmentosum. This is a clinical condition where the cells cannot repair the damaged DNA. So there will be extensive accumulation of mutations, a lot of uh, Full skin can go, and there will be a lot of dis a lot of disability and uh, uh, different features will be formed, especially prone to skin cancer. Now uh, there is one more repair, and that is known as double strand break repairs. Now, when are double strand breaks caused? Whenever there is high energy radiation or by free radicals, they also occur during gene rearrangements. Now, potentially lethal to the cells. So, this whole thing, there is a double strand break. Now, both the strands are broken down. Instead of, uh, both the strands are broken down. Uh, there is this, this strand and this strand, both there is a difference. So, they are lethal to the cell. Uh, then, in this, we have got two types. Non-homologous end joining repair. The DNA fragments are brought together by a group of proteins and they are relicated. So, a group of proteins will come, come non-homologous and they will join these DNA fragments, group of proteins, they will do that. Or that is called as non-homologous end joining repair. There is also what is called as homologous recombination repair. These are brought about by enzymes which do genetic recombination during meiosis. So whatever enzymes were involved in meiosis, they will come and help in doing the double strand break repair. So finally to conclude, accumulation of Uncorrected DNA damage over years is supposed to be the cause for aging and defects in the repair system is predisposition to cancer and also in immunodeficiency syndrome. So in all these things, this DNA repair mechanisms have been implicated. So next, in the next section, I'll be talking to you about mutations. So let us start with mutations. What do you mean by mutations? Mutation is if there is any change in the DNA sequence, like here you saw, there was a change in DNA sequence, it is called as mutation. Now, mutation in germ cells are transmitted to, to the next progeny and they are responsible for inherited diseases. Mutation in somatic cells are responsible for cancer. What are the causes? Again, errors in replication, spontaneous change in DNA, DNA damage, environmental factors like chemical mutagens, irradiations. What are the different types of mutation? Now, the first thing is point mutation, means single base has been altered, point, one point. So, there is base substitution. In this, we have two types, transition and transversion. Transition means a purine replaces another purine, you call it transition. Or a pyrimidine replaces another pyrimidine. So, trans purine to purine or pyrimidine to pyrimidine. 
okay then you call it as transition transversion purine is replaced by pyrimidine or pyrimidine is replaced by purine by vice versa so what are the one more type of mutation deletions one or several nucleotides is lost insertion one or several nucleotides is added translocation a piece of dna is transferred to another location in the genome what are the effects of point mutation let us first look at the effects of point mutation one it might be silent silent mutation means the mutation has resulted in the formation of another codon which codes for the same acid as i said there are many codons which can code for the same acid one amino acid can be coded by more than one codon so hence this does not make any difference the same protein has come example i have given ucu to ucc both code for serine so no problem at all now there is one more effect that can happen of point mutation missense mutation in this we have got acceptable missense means there is a change in the amino acid but no functional difference the functional protein is there for example hba beta 61 is lysine in hemoglobin hikari beta 61 is aspartate the mutation is occurred but there is no functional difference hemoglobin hikari is as good as hba that is acceptable partially acceptable missense that means it affects the functional properties of the protein like hbs sickle cell anemia so normal codon goes for glutamic acid now in mutation it codes for valine so what will happen it will have only effects they are partially acceptable but it can lead to hemolytic anemia or it can be unacceptable so it means a non functional protein this is incompatible with normal life for example hbm meth hemoglobin it is incompatible with life so these are the effects of point mutation silent missense or it could be nonsense also one more effect is nonsense a mutation which results in the formation of nonsense codon so what will happen premature termination of protein so what non functional protein example beta thalassemia a variant is nonsense codon mutated to sense codon it will result in a run on polypeptide the polypeptide keeps on increasing now those are all the effects of point mutation where you have got silent it could be missense or it could be nonsense missense could be acceptable partially acceptable or it could be unacceptable so let us look at the next thing that is frame shift mutation this is because of addition or deletion of bases there is a shifting of the reading frame a garbled protein with altered amino acid sequence example thalassemia in cystic fibrosis there is phenylalanine in the 508 position prevents a normal folding of the cftr protein so this will again it is because of a, it has caused a deletion of three nucleotides has happened so one amino acid is missing when that amino acid is missing the protein is able to not function now there are other types known as a trinucleotide repeat expansion when a sequence of three bases are repeated a protein will contain many extra copies of single amino acid like the huntington's disease where many extra glutamine residues are there the protein becomes unstable and it aggregates if such a trinucleotide repeat occurs in the untranslated portion of the gene there will be decreased amount of the protein seen example fragile x syndrome or myotonic dystrophy so with this we come to the end of the different dna repair mechanisms and the mutations that can take place and can affect in different diseases thank you